So my name is Christian Tevish. I'm a professor here of Operations and Information Management. I also work as a senior fellow for the Leonard David Institute of Health Economics. So I kind of have my problems with this concept of a, of a business failure in the sense that um, we always have to remember that innovation is really an act of selecting for many things to find, find a good theme. It's very much like evolution, which is trying out many species, many variants, and then few of them will survive. And it's the same thing with innovations, that for everything that we do, we will have to force ourselves to create hundreds or thousands of alternatives first. And then, yes, one will win, but the others... Uh, we're not really failures, they were just necessary ingredients uh, to m be part of the process. So the hardest thing for an organization to do is to remember that they will do many failures before they succeed. And so at the outset, they have to really search broadly. They have to force themselves to generate not five ideas, not 50 ideas. They have to generate 5,000 of ideas. They have to really then explore those ideas. They have to test them. They have to experiment. Then they have to slowly narrow down the field to maybe the hundreds, the dozens, till ultimately the winners are going to emerge. And it's really hard for an organization because oftentimes we are so overconfident as decision makers that we feel that we know what the right idea is going to be. You're much better off as a leader to acknowledge that you have no clue, that you are not good at placing bets. You're in a much better position of managing innovation by managing the process, by really committing that this is what you're going to do, start with many things, and then let the nature play out, find the good ideas through experimentation, as opposed to pl placing an early bet up front. Again, I think the, the, the challenge on here is of creating many ideas and creating diversity. And I think oftentimes, especially with the success stories of a person like Steve Jobs, we have this idea that it's going to be brilliant leaders that through intuition will make the kind of the big bets. And then their job is to rally the troops behind them and make kind of big organizational commitments. I do believe that the right approach is really one of uh, engaging the front line, engaging all the way to customers, suppliers, really opening up the innovation system to everybody, then let the process play out, make sure that through discipline you're going to get from these many insights, you're going to get the few ideas that ultimately are worth it. I think ultimately we all want to work in an innovative organization. You ask any college graduate, MBA graduate, consultant, we're looking for a new career opportunity. Mm -hmm. We all want to work in an innovative culture. And I think as a leader, it's just hard to change the culture. You're not going to go to the work, to your office on Monday morning and say, oh, today I'm going to make this an innovative organization. The lever that you have as an executive is you can change the way that the processes are executed. You can change the process and sooner or later, culture will follow. But you start by changing the measures, the process, the incentives, the recruiting, and that's what gets you to, to culture. Culture itself is really, really important, but that is not the lever that you control as an executive.